So we're all still trying to understand what an eSIM is, and it's already old news. Say hello to iSIM, but before we dive into that, why don't we start from the beginning? The, the very beginning. <laughs> So, a SIM is a subscriber identification module whose only purpose is to grant your phone access to the network that the SIM card belongs to. Think of it as a work ID you use to access the work premises. Pretty much something like that. When mobile phones began, a SIM card was literally the size of a standard credit card. That chip and pin bank card that you have now, that was exactly what the first SIM card looked like back in the day. As time went on, the size reduced significantly till we got to the nano sims of today which are just about the size of the chip that's glued to them. This sim is a chip with details of the service provider written onto it or coded onto it. So what if we could just rewrite the details of different service providers on it at will? Instead of having three sim cards stored in the pouch of my phone, just one sim card that never leaves my phone and all I have to do is select the one I want to use at any time by just clicking a button. This is how the eSIM or embedded SIM was born. A chip that can be loaded with SIM information for any network. So how this works is that the device manufacturers soldered the SIM chip onto the motherboard, making it part of the components of the device's hardware. Some of the advantages of this are that you don't lose your collection of SIM cards that you keep inside your smartphone. And it frees up a lot more space inside the smartphone for other features like a slightly bigger battery. Then comes iSIM or integrated SIM and this takes things a bit further. The SIM module will now be removed from the motherboard and placed inside the device's chipset. So the SIM will now be a part of the device's processor. And Qualcomm has already included this in the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 smartphone chipset. If you have used an eSIM before, you will be familiar with the process of loading an eSIM onto your device. You get the eSIM from your service provider, which is a card with a QR code printed onto it. This QR code contains a link to your service provider's system, which will then allow your smartphone to download your SIM information from their system to the eSIM chip on your smartphone. To load it up, you just go to your smartphone settings, then SIM management, and select a new eSIM. This will activate the camera and you will be able to scan the QR code and the SIM data will be downloaded onto your smartphone. So, for smartphones that will be supporting iSIMs, this process will be exactly the same. What has changed is where the SIM module is located. It's moved from the motherboard to the chipset, but your experience as a user is still the same as when loading up an eSIM. The push for the move to an iSIM is it freed up a lot extra space on the motherboard for more components. It will also consume less power when it's part of the chipset and it reduces the manufacturing costs since it's now part of an already existing component in a smartphone. The battery gains are very mild but the reduced motherboard complexity thanks to fewer discrete components do mean that Either more features can be added to smartphones without making them bulkier, or the motherboard can be smaller and result in a bigger battery without changing the size of the device. It might even mean a slightly lower price to purchase these devices since they're less complicated. So the future is already here where the traditional SIM card is now old fashioned. Most new flagships now support eSIMs and starting this year we will start seeing some of them come with iSIMs. However, in Zimbabwe, we have Econet being the only service provider issuing out eSIMs. And this is the issue with the technology in that it's not yet supported by a majority of operators the world over. And in some regions like Africa where feature phones and entry-level smartphones dominate, it's a technology most will not be able to experience right now because it's still reserved for expensive high-end flagships. But with time, we can expect to see the tech trickle down to cheaper, more accessible smartphones, so at least we're hopeful for that.